We will tie these words all together in just a moment. But first of all, let me remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be a part of our YouTube family if you've not already. There's a button in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. Leave a comment. Thumbs up to this video. There are some words that narcissists absolutely hate. It's like it disembowels them. It takes away their confidence. But more importantly, it takes away their control because control is how they get their supply. Their supply is anything that boosts their ego. So let's take a look at these. I've got seven of them. There's many more. You could probably think of some and add it to the list. And by the way, if you have ever used any of these words or phrases, you might want to tell us uh, which ones you've used and how they worked. But uh, one thing I found that works effectively with a narcissist is just flat out tell him you are wrong. You're wrong. The only time I like to use this is when the narcissist is actually wrong, which, by the way, is uh, a lot of the time, sometimes most of the time. So I still use it sparingly because you never know. Sometimes a narcissist may be correct, and the worst thing you want to do is tell him he is wrong when he is not wrong. That has the opposite effect to just boost his ego. The second thing I like to say to narcissists, Two-letter phrase is question, what if? Now, you know, I like to ask narcissists questions because that gets inside their head. They can't help but answer the question inside their head because, well, they're humans. We all do that. So ask the question, frame it as a question, what if? That is, give them an alternate plan. The narcissist has the perfect plan in his mind, in his way of thinking because, well, he's all that. He is the king or she is the queen of the universe. So, well, what if we did it this way? How dare you challenge them? They will argue with you. And the fact that they argue with you is a good thing because it shows you that you've gotten inside their head or it may just be an idea. The narcissist may have an idea and uh, you say, well, what if we think about it this way? So he may have a philosophy, he may have an ideology, he may have an opinion about something that is political or maybe religious or whatever. So challenge his idea with the question, what if? And again, if they argue with you, remember, positive sign, this simply means you touched a nerve. You're getting done what you intend to do. Number three, I didn't know how to phrase this, so I, I took this phrase, none of your business, and I asked ChatGPT, what is a better way to say none of your business? Everything is the narcissist's business. They don't like this defiance, but here's the response I got. Uh, number one is that's private. So if a narcissist asks you or wants to delve into your private life, which, by the way, they do, just say, well, you know, that's kind of private. I don't really want to talk about my family. I don't want to talk about my friends. I don't want to talk about my past, whatever. That's private. Or you could say, I just rather not discuss that. How dare you defy the narcissist? Cool. And uh, you may look at his face. Look at her face. Look at their nonverbal communication, the way that they respond. If uh, it's not favorable, again, that's a good thing. That's a sign that you've touched a nerve. You've got inside their head. Another way you could say none of your business is that's personal information. So you are informing the narcissist that uh, some of this stuff is yours and not his. The narcissist thinks he owns the planet. I mean everything. Not just the material things, but he owns the people, he owns the thoughts, he owns the ideas, everything is his. Kind of like a little toddler. You know, the first words they use are no and uh, mine. Sometimes they say why when they get a little bit older. So take these and you may want to phrase them as questions, same reason to make them answer the question inside their head. So instead of saying that that's private, you may ask, don't you think it's a little private? Or, you know, uh, what if I just rather not discuss this? Or don't you think that's a little bit too personal of information to share with you? Or would you be offended if I said that's none of your business? Number uh, five, number four, rather, is ask the question, why? So when the narcissist wants to do something or he expresses one of those ideas we talked about before, just to ask him why. Why do you ask? Make him justify his or her reason. The narcissist typically is uh, unquestionable in their way of thinking. Nobody asks a narcissist why, but you just did. So what you're doing is you are... Well, you're reversing his strategy. 
His or her strategy is to take supply out of you. That is to take away your sense of worth. They want to disembowel you through controlling you. And you're just turning it backwards just with one three-letter word. Why? Why do you ask? Why do you want to do that? Make them answer the question. If not uh, verbally, make them, make them rather answer the question inside their head. Number five is a question that I love to ask a narcissist, and that is, uh, are you a narcissist? Just ask him flat out. Or maybe if you want to tone it down a little bit, you might say, are you being a narcissist or are you being like a narcissist if you don't want to sound too accusatory? So are you being a narcissist? Uh, just, you know, are you a narcissist? That's my favorite. Number six is uh, this is just flat out say no. I did a whole video on this once, uh, but the narcissist wants you to do it his way. And it's kind of like saying you're wrong, but you're just shortening it a little bit. Just say no. Uh, the narcissist may ask you for a loan. Now, if I had said no every time a narcissist asked me to loan the money, I would have uh, several thousand dollars in my bank account that I don't have now. Because, you know, I'm a soft touch for things like that. They, they make me feel sorry for them. I think they're my friends. I'm just trying to help out my friend or my friend's friend or a member of my friend's family. So, yeah, I will loan you the money. But I need it back, and of course, it never comes back. Or they may ask you for a favor. I had a narcissist uh, friend, put that in quotes, who was forever asking for rides. He needed me to take him somewhere because he didn't have a driver's license. My understanding is a court took it away from him because he didn't show up in court. You know, narcissists, they're, uh, they're above the law. So just say no when they ask you for money, ask you for favors, ask you for uh, rides ask you to go along with them. Uh, now, I had a narcissist, uh, again, friend, quote, unquote, that uh, wanted me to help him in business. Again, probably one of the dumbest things I ever did is I went along with him. I said, well, you know, maybe I can make some money out of this. But at the time, I did not know he was a narcissist. So if I had said no, I would have saved myself a lot of grief. Okay, number seven is my favorite phrase altogether. And that's just not to say anything at all. Say no words. Say no, uh, uh, don't ask any questions. Just don't say anything. Say nothing. So let's tie all of this together. One thing I learned in marketing, one of the reasons I was successful in marketing is because I understood the power of power words. There's some words that are just powerful. The word power is a power word. Uh, the word family is a power word. You know, there's several words that you can use in your marketing that evokes a certain emotion that elicits the person making a purchase, you know, uh, closing the deal. So words are powerful. So saying you're wrong, it says more than just you're wrong. It says uh, you're not who you think you are. You're not smarter than me. It's, I mean, it just has a lot of things that it says to it. So uh, we need to understand by tying these things together. The words and phrases are very powerful. And we also need to understand that um, they, they, just, they just gut the mar narcissist. They just disempower the narcissist. And that's kind of what you want to do, not literally, obviously, but you want to take the wind out of a sail, so to speak. Leave him floating adrift out in the middle of the ocean because he is reliant on you. You are the wind in his sails. He'll never give you credit for it. She will never give you credit for it. But without you, without supply, basically they're dead in the water. So leave them dead in the water. If you don't, they're going to hurt you. So you really don't have a choice. Lower right-hand corner, see that circle, that dot? Click on that, become a part of our YouTube family, and don't forget to click the bell so you get notifications. Lower left-hand corner, there's a rectangle. Click that, and we keep on talking. That's our library where you can access videos that we've made over the past years, and we'll see you all next time.